Hello, I'm County Judge Richard Cortez, and welcome to another segment of County Matters. Today, we're actually on location here at the Master Garden that's located in Precinct 2. We're here with Texas AgriLife, and we're, we're about to give you some good information on how to protect your plants during this coming winter period. Well, today we're, we're honored to have uh, Ashley Gregory. She's here to help us how to care for our plants during this, this winter period. Building a quality of life in our community is helped by us learning and being more knowledgeable of Absolutely. things that we love and care for, like our pets, our plants. So Ashley, tell us, yeah. how can we help these people protect their plants? Well, one of the most important things is that when the cold weather comes is that your plant isn't stressed. Um, Typically what we're dealing with is heat, right? So before any cold weather sets in, one of the most important things you can do is water everything really well. Um, a plant that isn't stressed and well watered is gonna have a lot better chance of surviving cold water. Uh, the next thing that's really important in the cold weather is to try to cover your plants in a way where you are trapping the heat that is being released from the soil. Because it doesn't take much more than a difference of one or two degrees um, to really make the difference between whether or not the plant survives. So one of the things that we often see are what um, us horticulturists refer to as landscape lollipops, where somebody throws a big old blanket over the top of their tree, guilty, <laughs> wraps guilty, it around guilty. the trunk, and while that looks like it's doing a lot, it's actually not capturing any of that heat that is coming out of the soil. If you have some plants that are maybe small or tender, you can fill some buckets with water and put them underneath your covering because as water cools, it actually releases a little bit of heat. Wow, right. I didn't know that. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know that. And even if you can't cover your plant, Watering, like I said, is really important. And then mulch. If you can put a nice thick layer of mulch all around your roots, it's all about the soil and the roots. If you can do enough to protect that root system, even if you lose what's above ground, it's gonna come back. And it, there was something about that cold that was almost rejuvenating to the plants. They came back very fiercely. Um, they were very green, lots of flowers. And I'm sure those of you that have native plants definitely saw that they bounced back a lot better than some of our maybe um, tropical or more subtropical things that aren't necessarily from our area. One thing that's great about potted plants is that you can actually move them indoors, into your garage, um, under a carport, but Sometimes we have larger ones or maybe we don't have the space to move them indoors. So one thing that can help with the potted plants is actually grouping them together. Um, they're all gonna be releasing a little bit of heat from their soil and stuff. Wow. So okay. grouping them all into a bunch and then covering them in some fashion can make all the difference in whether or not they survive that cold temperature. I think what we'll do is maybe show some proper technique on okay. how to cover some plants so that people can visually understand what's important about covering them. All right, well, let's, let's do that. All right, let's do it. So tell us, what is the best technique to protect our plants? It's all about trapping that heat that's coming out of the soil, right? And even in a raised bed like this, there's gonna be heat coming out of the soil. So one of the most important things about covering your plant is having good contact down at the soil line. You wanna make sure that your fabric is weighted down, whether you use rocks, weights, um, you can even use the soil itself to put that, keep that fabric in place. Um, today, here in this raised bed, we're actually using stakes. And I will say that stakes are not always necessary, but if you remember when we had our freeze back in February, we actually had rain with that as well. And so one of the things that can happen is that once that rain settles onto this fabric and it's touching our plant material, it's actually gonna freeze and turn to ice, right? So then essentially what you've done is you've just put a thin layer of material and a block of ice right on top of your plant. <laughs> okay. So it's kind of counterproductive in a sense. Yeah. So if we know or are expecting some wet weather along with those freezing temperatures, it's always a good idea to use a stake to make sure that your material is not actually touching the plant. And today we're actually using a purchased freeze fabric material, but using what you have around the home works just as well, whether that's blankets or fabric. 
You know, we're in the valley, we have citrus trees, and a lot of them have the valley lemons. I mean, what should we do about those? A lot of the citrus in the valley is grafted. So it has a different rootstock that's one on top of it. And one thing that you can do is what we call soil mounding. And you can actually just get some soil and mound it up above that graft line. Because one thing that did happen to people is that when their citrus trees bounced back, they bounced back below the graft. And so actually what you ended up with was sour orange instead right. of whatever was on the top of your tree. Um, so that soil mounding can actually help protect that graft and ensure that whatever comes back is actually what you want. <laughs> well, Ashley, thank you very much. And Texas A&M AgriLife, thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Until next time, thank you. Thanks. <laughs>